Hello everyone, welcome replay viewers. If you're new to me, welcome. I'm Brandy Marie Johnson. That's me right there. And these are my Periscope hacks. So this is all my social media information. If you wanna get in touch with me in places other than Periscope, I have the same username on Twitter. And then I have my Instagram, my Facebook, my LinkedIn, and my Snap. Word of wisdom, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. So if you are new to me, type new. If you're new to Periscope. Hello. Oh, funny, fun mess here. So I've been on this platform for a while, since June. I've learned a lot of stuff. And I think that as people, hi Dave, hi Roy, thank you for joining. As people who have been on here since, goodness, we've been in like nine months, June-ish. Yeah, so it's been a while and there are things we take for granted that we know how to do on the platform that we just assume everyone knows how to do. But if you're brand new to Periscope, there's a couple hacks I'd like to teach you. Kimmy, welcome, welcome. Nice place you have, thank you. <laughs> In my office right now, almost a year old. I know, not even a year, not even a year yet and I just feel like I've spent so much time on this platform and I've made more connections here than I have anywhere else. So I wanna share with you some things that I've learned either through um, by mistake. <laughs> Usually a lot of these hacks have been completely on accident. We, my, um, my friend Danielle Ford, who I talk to all the time on Periscope, there's a lot of things that we've done and we're like, I didn't even know you could do this on here. And then we start to share them out and then it kind of dies off and it comes back. But here are the top 10, which I think to be very important. And maybe you know them, maybe you don't, but I wanna tell you all about it. This will be your greatest year. Thank you. I already feel like it is my greatest year, my greatest quarter almost, because it's March. Can you believe it? Okay, so now's a good time to share out with your followers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the hack, and as I tell you about the hack, I'm gonna show you on the screen how to do it, because I have my little iPad mini here. And this is a hack within itself, to be honest with you. So if you ever want to share something that you're doing on a device and you wanna share that on your screen, I do that with QuickTime. So I think that alone is something helpful. So let me go ahead and get all set up here. And the way you do that is you just plug in your, you know, your cord, your, your regular cord, and you plug that in, you go to QuickTime, and you do like a new movie recording, and then you choose from the drop down that you wanna use your iPad screen, your iPad mini or your iPhone screen, and then it shares it to your desktop. Boom, then you have screen share. Okay, so I'm gonna get into Periscope, the Periscope app with you guys. The first one I wanna teach you. So do you ever wonder when you look at your followers, and by the way, this is a good time to share out with your followers. I'm gonna get right into the content for you. Um, if you are, are wondering, of the people that you follow, do you ever wonder who follows you back? I mean, it's not like you have time to really cross-reference everything and be like, oh, I wonder if so-and-so follows me, and you know, you're not sure. Well, there's a really simple and easy way to see who follows you back. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to see that really quickly. And here we go. So let me turn the screen around for you. Here we are, so here we are. The way you see that is by looking at your mutuals, okay? So you're gonna go to start a broadcast. So here I am, I'm about to start a broadcast. If you hit the lock button right here, you hit the lock, then you can do a private broadcast. And right now it's loading all my mutuals. So all these people here, these are all the people I follow who follow me back. So now I can quickly and easily see everyone that I follow and um, if they follow me back or not. Then I can hit select all mutuals and I can do a private scope with only the people who follow me back. So that's a quick and easy way to just sort of scan through and see who your mutual followers are, which I really like. I like that feature a lot. And it's a nice way to do a private broadcast. So if you just want to broadcast with like one or two people, maybe you don't want to do a big broadcast yet and you're still pretty new to the platform, you want to like test out the functionality, I highly suggest doing a private broadcast. People underutilize it. It's really, really cool. Yeah, isn't that a cool little hack? The mutual thing is... I mean, it's something I think a lot of people don't know about, so not just not just you. Okay, so the next thing is that you can, so if you go, you had no idea, are you serious, Dave, or are you messing with me? 
<laughs> I think you're messing with me. Okay. Oh, for real? Okay, cool. I'm, well, I taught you something else and you're like, you're, you totally know what you're doing. The next one, Dave probably knows this one. So when you go into a broadcast, and this is frustrating, right? When you go into a broadcast and it'll be full. So really popular scopers, this happens a lot. Um, let me see if I can find one that's pretty busy right now. But if we go into a broadcast, and does that ever happen to you guys? So you aren't able to chat in the room because the room is too full. The broadcaster has way too many people in there. So something you can do, and you can do this no matter what, actually, if you just want to like get the person's attention. So let's just go into Coach Glitter's broadcast really quick. So um, you love this hat. Vanilla Ice is broadcast. <laughs> Vanilla Ice is broadcasting. So what you can do here is when you swipe to the right on the broadcast, as long as my iPad wants to work, when you go to share the broadcast, look at this, I'm having technical issues. So you swipe to the right and then it gives you the option to share this broadcast right here. You see the share. So when you go to share and you go to share it on Twitter, instead of sharing this whole pre-populated thing that it says here it's it will come up eventually my house doesn't like apparently that i'm trying to that i'm trying to broadcast everyone so see here it has all this text this is the text of um to put everything in for that particular scope but if you delete all of that out right you delete all of it out then you can just tell Coach Glitter hello right here. So that's that's something you can do. And if you just do that, and I want to switch, you want to make sure you're, brought, you're writing the message from the account that you're logged into. And I can just be like, hey, love your scope. Love your scopes or something. Or you could ask like a question that's relevant to what they're talking about, and she will get that right now. So if the room is full, then I can do that. Yes, especially with people that aren't serious about the broadcast. Yeah, because if you can't, just because you can't chat live doesn't mean you can't chat at all. And you know, you might forget later. So you might as well just, you know, while you're in the broadcast, you don't even have to leave and go open the Twitter app. You could just access that while you're in the scope and you never have to leave the broadcast, which I think is really cool. So that's a fun one to do. And then now she's gonna get a tag for me you know, right when she ends her broadcast and she'll see that I sent her a message. Yeah, so if you like hacks like this, please share it with your followers. I think it's really cool. A lot of people don't know that that they're here. Another one is, and this one's kind of like, I don't know what the what they are right now, but this one is maybe a lot of people know, but there's a lot of different hashtags you can use. Um, I don't really need my screen for this one. But there are hashtags you can use in the title of your broadcast itself and that will trigger specific hearts so that's one that i like to use there's a lot of different ones i mean i don't know they'll probably do a spring one sometimes you can test the hashtags to see if they trigger certain hearts but depending on special events usually they're around special events that are going on holidays seasons you can use a hashtag in your title of your scope and that's why the hearts will alternate between hearts and like a snowflake or hearts and monkeys. So if you do Chinese New Year, those monkeys will start to flow up. Um, if you do Colbert, I think his face might still come up. Um, and then, you know, you can try them and sometimes you can discover a hashtag and that's really cool too. So test them out, try different hashtags, especially like St. Patty's Day is coming up. So if you want to put <laughs> those monkeys right yeah you put if you put chinese new year hashtag chinese new year then you'll get the monkeys if you do hashtag spring i bet something w will happen soon for valentine's day they did broken hearts so you, know, you just never know but hashtags in the title of the scope usually a trending hashtag of some kind will trigger a different type of heart okay hello thank you for joining me the next one is keyboard shortcuts all right, do you guys ever do promote your scope? Do you ever do promote your scope or do you find yourself typing certain things over and over again? Like, hi, I, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so or like what you do for a living, people might ask you that and it's annoying to have to always type it in. So what you do on the iPhone, and you can probably do it on Android, but since I have an iPhone, I wanna stay in my lane here, is if you go into settings and you create a shortcut 
Um, is this information in a book? I want to purchase it. Well, it's not in a book, but actually I can add it. I have, um, I have a Periscope freebie that I give away for newbies and I can add the hacks and it'd be really easy. I'll just add a page and I'll let you guys know. I can put that out. Yeah, I mean, they're not like super crazy. I'm not going to charge for this. So I can put it on my Twitter. I can put it on my Twitter maybe sometime this week and I'll let you guys know. <laughs> write the book. I'm not going to write a book on Periscope. Um, okay, so keyboard shortcuts. So this is really cool. So if you don't want to type in all the time because I'm a digital marketing and branding strategist and if I do like a promote your scope and you know you're constantly typing in who you are and what you do. If you don't want to have to keep typing that over and over again, you can create a keyboard shortcut in your iPhone settings. So now if I just type the word, um, I think I just type like brand or something, I forget what my code is, and then all of a sudden it'll type that whole line of text. And since I have like a Periscope course, a lot of times I'll hop in on Danielle's broadcast because we made the course together, and she'll just ask me to put the URL and I don't have to type it anymore, right? I just go ahead and I type in the shortcut and then it puts in the URL of our course or a five day challenge. So if you have different things you're promoting all the time, you might want to just create a shortcut for it so you don't have to type it in because type, I don't know about you, but my autocomplete and um, everything else, it just kind of messes me up, messes up my flow. So I do shortcuts so I don't have to deal with that. I would show you, but it's going to take a little while. I mean, I can show you where to find it. I don't think I have any set up here. Well, this is the annoying part. So here's the annoying part. If you have Apple devices, which I have everything, I have the Mac book, then I have my iPhone, and then I have my iPad, it syncs all your shortcuts. So when I type, there's like, I need to switch this up, so thanks for reminding me, but there's one shortcut I created, um, and now it always types like my, my Periscope course, it'll always take me to my website. I'm not trying to do that. It's just like I'm trying to use an abbreviation. So be careful what shortcut you use. If it's an abbreviation you might use a lot or later in the future, it's going to be really irritating. So be careful what you create. Okay. Let me see if I can pull up the settings really quick. I've only done this a couple of times. I do that. I've done it like months ago. So you just set up all your shortcuts and you don't have to think about it anymore. So I just did it one time. It's not something I do constantly. So I don't want to waste your time kind of fiddling through. But it's in your main settings. Um, I'll share my screen. It froze on me. But it's in main settings of your, your general settings in your device. And then you go into keyboard. So you go into keyboard and then you can go into your shortcuts. And you're going to go into text replacement. So right here. It says text replacement, and then you can hit the plus sign in the corner, and then you can create your own text replacement. And you tell the you tell the settings what you want it to be. So like I put FM for follow me, because I will join my own broadcast like this. So I'll show you right now. This is a really cool one to do. Um, actually, this is my next, this is actually my next, hack <laughs> to join your own broadcast. So the next hack I'm going to show you is I'm going to join this broadcast with you because I can join in my own broadcast. And this is really important to do because notifications, um, yeah, I'm really good at, at Twitter. Sorry if I missed that. If I missed a comment, I was looking at too many things at once. So if I go into my own broadcast, so I'm going to do a little matrix trick on you guys. So I just joined the room. You saw I joined, I'm green. And notifications can be fickle on this platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and just invite my followers all over again. And um, I'll share it again on Twitter, just to let everyone know that we're live in case they missed the first notification. Then after I post that, I'm gonna come into the room and I'm gonna just type FM and you're gonna see my note to follow me. And I won't have to like, deal with everything else. See, so I just typed FM and I was able to get like all the hearts and everything to pop up. So go ahead and follow me if you're not, <laughs> but that that's why I like to use shortcuts. So I can just hop into the room. I can, and it's so quick, you know, it's so annoying to like be talking to you guys and be like, follow, like type everything. So just create your own shortcuts, whatever makes the most sense for you, your favorite emojis, you don't always have to search for them, whatever you want. I think shortcuts make it so much easier. Okay, so shortcuts, joining your own room, 
Um, the next one, oh, this one's kind of cool. So this isn't really a hack, but it's more of a resource. But couch mode, have you guys used this? Do you know it exists? I feel like people don't talk about it that much, but it's a good way to find new people to follow. Can you answer my question? I want to learn. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, okay, I block sometimes and it's not always like hecklers or anyone that's mean. It's just like disruptive. Like he wants to learn, but he keeps interrupting me. So he had to get blocked and I'm sorry. And I might unblock him later, but right now it was distracting me because he kept like interrupting my flow. Okay. Couch mode. Have you guys heard of it? <laughs> Dave, I know Dave, you were being so nice, but I was like ignoring him because it wasn't time to give my email. Um, couch mode. So you just go to periscope.tv front slash couch mode. Okay. Let's look, let's look at couch mode together. You guys want to? <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Let's do this together. So I like to do couch mode. I'm going to warn you. It is, it is a time waster. It is entertaining though. It is very entertaining. So what it is, it's it's web based. So I'll show you this. Where periscope.tv couch mode is already in my favorites because I, I do this quite often. So let me load it up. So here's couch. Okay. So couch mode allows you. Let me see if I can put the sound on. It's like um, Periscope Roulette. So you go here and you just hit in the upper right hand corner, there's next broadcast. And when you hit that, it'll randomly put you with another scope that's happening right now. Anything live. And that's how I find interesting scopes because who has time? There's no search function. Like what is this? And it's usually the most popular scope. So this girl has 1,300 people in her room right now. So, yeah, very interesting. Um, <laughs> wow. So he has 51 people in his room. Then you can go to his Twitter and you can you can look at everything. So you just literally keep hitting this until you see something that you think is interesting. And um, it could be a little dangerous because you don't know what's going to pop up. But I'm so sorry, my dog is barking. Anyway, that is couch mode. I think that it's a very cool resource, but you can go you can go play with that later. Okay? So it's periscope.tv front slash couch mode. And that's how you access it. It's pretty cool. I've discovered some interesting scopers. Some interesting scopes and scopers. But um, if you ever want to find people to follow or if you have like some spare time, <laughs> go play with that. It's very interesting. Yeah, I don't really use it that often, but I have used it in the past. And this one's kind of cool. Like, these are guys golfing. I might want to get his username for my husband because my husband loves to golf and he doesn't think that Periscope's for him. So I think something like this would be interesting to show him. But, you know, there's no easy way to find people to follow. So I think Couch Mode is, is cool. And Couch Mode is what a lot of people use with Apple TV. So they'll use Couch Mode and that's what they watch, you know, from home. All right, so Couch Mode catch or full scope hope you guys are using both of these or at least one of them but i use catch.me and i use fullscope.tv i have to turn off couch mode because it's distracting me they're like it's actually kids golfing this is weird so i use both of those and the way that i use them is for follow-up that's kind of the biggest way and for analytics of course so for full scope it's more analytics based so you can see how many people join your scope, how long they stay. Um, you can sort through comments. You can sort through hearts, like highest number given to lowest number to see who's the most engaged people, average amount of time that they've stayed on your scope. I mean, it's it's really, really cool. So fullscope.tv. Hello, Summit Live. Thanks for joining. And I use full scope all the time and I use catch.me. So that saves a copy of your scope and then you can also follow up with people my periscope and twitter names are different is there a way to still use catch no it works off of your twitter account um if i were you i'd try i try to get those to be the same you can send a message over to periscope 
to see if you can match them up, but it works a lot better when they're matched up and it's really good for engagement because people more than likely will look for you after your broadcast ends and they're gonna look for your name on Periscope on Twitter. And that's how I do a lot of engagement after my scope ends. Is it beneficial to stay on your scope for a certain amount of time? Is it beneficial to stay on your scope? Oh, you mean to broadcast for a certain amount of time? Um, you know, this is totally based on my own experience. I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer to this because I've done like five minute scopes and I've done 15 minute and like hour long scopes. So for me, in terms of viewership and engagement, usually an hour works the best. But if you have really good content, like my 15 minute or five minute scopes have the highest number of replays and um you know but i get the most increase in followers when i have longer scopes yeah so if you have strong content it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you know but if you're just doing a check-in where it's not going to be very content rich i would keep those like maybe on the shorter side but if you can dedicate an hour of just interaction and engagement you're going to see the most like when i do my profile reviews and i do them for at least an hour i get at least on average like 30 to 50 new followers from the scope alone because it allows people to share out new people come in and then people will follow because they don't want to miss the next show so you know having a schedule and things like that and then having consistent consistency in terms of how long your show is i think works really well um okay so we talked about catch full scope couch mode Okay, so blocking trolls. I know that trolls are an issue. I know a lot of people worry about trolls and um, I don't like them either. I have like bad experiences, but I, you know, for the most part, I just block as you can see. So one thing I want to tell you is that, and a lot of people don't realize, so when you block a troll, you're going to go back and take notes. Cool. Yeah, don't take notes now. Give hearts now and then take notes on the replay. Um, so you can block trolls lots of different ways. You can block trolls while you're watching a scope so that'll block them for you so you know someone's gonna troll me during this scope they're probably gonna troll you later you know they just like they don't care so you can block them while you're watching a scope you can block them if you miss it while you're broadcasting you can block them in the replay you can block them in other people's replays as well and um, of course you can also hit the little gear image if you see people who are following you who seem like trolls you can go ahead and block them before you ever go live. So I look through my follower list and then I go to the little gear icon and I block people. So, you know, those are the three main ways that you can block. You can be like really proactive about it before they even show up on your live broadcast. Um, I already covered joining your own scope and sharing it. Oh, last one. Okay, here's the last one. This one's really cool. If you're a brand or a business, oh, thank you, Noi. If you're a brand or a business, this is awesome. So you can you can have more than one person logged into your account at once. <laughs> Jeremy, that's funny. So say I'm logged in right now into my account. If I wanted to start another broadcast, I could. So if I'm right here and I'm broadcasting, but then I have like my, you know, a friend or some someone else who's going to cover a different perspective of the same event. So say I'm at like a wine tasting and I'm in one tasting room and I'm there with a friend and they want to broadcast from a different area of, of the event, like another tasting area or a live performance, they can log into my account and then we'll simultaneously have two broadcasts going. So people like Alex Khan does this sometimes because his room fills up so quickly he'll have two broadcasts going so that more people can access at once and be able to comment. How many broadcasts can you do from one account? I know you can definitely do two. I don't know about anyone who's done more than two, but you know, I have a show on Parachute TV, so sometimes shows will overlap or if there's breaking news, but we can all access the account. We all have a login. So um, yeah, so you can do that. And that's really cool for brands. That's really cool for businesses, um, event. I think live event coverage, it works really well. How do viewers know who to watch? They don't, that's the cool thing. They can kind of hop back in, like in and out of the room and they can see different perspectives of the same event. I think it'd be cool for a concert. I mean, there's so much possibility, right? Like what you could cover, what you could have going on. If you're doing an interview, you could have you know one set up like from this perspective to view the person that's being interviewed. You could have another one from this perspective, but it just lets you have 
different options. Also, if you're someone who has a shared account with multiple people, then you don't have to worry about, you know, someone missing their, their time slot. So for Parachute TV, because we all have about half hour time slots, it's okay for, um, oh good, okay, okay, now I will see you in a bit. So if I, if I go on to Parachute TV on Saturdays, my show is at 11, so if I log in and say I happen to go a little over my time, it doesn't lock out the next broadcaster. So it's really cool for accounts that are shared because no one ever gets locked out of the account. You know, and they can still do their content as well. And there might be a little bit of an overlap, but it's never going to kick the other person out. So it's kind of cool in that sense if you do if you do shared accounts. All right, so we can cover all of these. So private scopes, I talked about being able to do private scopes, and the fact that when you do a private scope, you can look at your mutuals. Your mutuals are people who you follow who follow you back. So those are two hacks right there: the the ability, and then um, being able to see who follows you back. Parachute, Parachute. <laughs> Parachute TV is Periscope's first TV channel. And what happens on Parachute TV is that all of us broadcasters, there's a group of us, we've pitched shows over to Parachute TV and we have designated time slots. My show is on Saturday, it's called Winology, and I do live wine tastings because I live in Napa Valley. And then I also talk about wine and living in Napa and things like that. So yeah, everybody has their own thing that they share there, but Parachute TV is really cool if you want to have a TV show and share something that's outside of your regular channel. I don't really do wine tastings on this channel because it doesn't fit the brand. I do strategies and growing your business and then I focus just on wine on my other show. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. They have a website. You can kind of see the TV guide of what, what's on there. All right. Um, you can tweet during a scope. That was the third one. So if you're in a scope, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the great, it's so pretty here. You can go into a scope and if the broadcast is too full for you to comment, you can share, like you're going to share on Twitter. So you go to share on Twitter, but instead of sharing on Twitter, you delete out all the text and then you can write a comment directly to that person without ever having to leave the Periscope app. Really, really cool hack. Okay, so you can tweet during a scope. If you use special hashtags, you're able to switch your hearts to something else. And that's purely dependent on what's going on right now, depending on the season, if there's a live event. A lot of times you'll just discover a hashtag accidentally if you're using them in your title. But if you've ever wondered how people have different types of hearts, it's because they're using hashtags in their title to trigger that. And it's fun to discover them. I bet there'll be one coming up for St. Patty's Day. I bet there'll be one for spring. Um, we never know what they're going to be. And we never know how long they're going to last. But they're fun to figure out. Yep. And keyboard shortcuts. Okay, keyboard shortcuts. This is a really good one to do because who has time to type in everything all the time? So I recommend you do them for like your favorite emojis, um, for promote your scope, if you ever do promote your scopes, if you don't wanna keep typing in what you do for a living or what you scope about, create a shortcut for that and then you don't have to keep typing it. Um, two people can broadcast from the same account simultaneously. We just talked about that. Couch mode to find new broadcasters. So go to periscope.tv front slash couch mode on your computer and you can just kind of scan through live scopes. It's usually the most popular ones live right this minute, and that'll help you find new people to watch if you're trying to find broadcasters that you might like. Another one is catch.me or full scope, so you can get analytics. That way you can start to build a case if you ever wanna get sponsorships or you want brands to notice you, they're gonna to wanna to see how many people watch you, how engaged they are. You can get all of that off of catch.me is really good for follow-up on comments, full scope for analytics. So sign up for both of those, they're free. Go get them today, it's linked to your Twitter account. I highly recommend both of them. Blocking trolls, so when you block trolls, you can block them live while you're broadcasting, while someone else is broadcasting, on a replay, or you can just block them in your follow list. So there's like quite a few ways to, to block out trolls if that's something that concerns you or something that you experience. Another bonus thing is if you have location settings on that tends to bring in more trolls so if you want to have less less trolls in your broadcast you can turn off location settings because that removes you from the map view 
the large map view, it doesn't remove you from the live listing, but it removes you from the map. So you're no longer a red dot. However, that does hide you from your potential client or viewer that you're trying to attract. So just know that it's a give or take. I have had location settings off for majority of my scopes and I've still been able to get about, I don't know, over 4,000 followers. So it's not going to prevent you from growth, but it is going to block out um, people that you might want to find you as well. That's my disclaimer. Um, and the last one, which I did at the beginning of this scope, if you weren't here, and I can try it again, is if you have a second device, you can join your own scope. So here I am, I just joined our scope. I'm going to use a shortcut that I created, I'm just gonna type FM, and that is my follow me. So very quickly I'm able to say, hey, follow me and people can follow me from directly in the room. Now this is a really good one to use, especially when it comes to sharing out your scope because not everyone gets the notifications. Danielle is in the house. Hey, you just got here at the end, but I'm glad that you're here. You know all these hacks. Danielle and I have discovered most of these hacks accidentally, <laughs> so <laughs> they're a lot of fun. Yeah, I just recapped them too, but it's okay, you can still hop in. It's not too late to share with your followers if you found this information useful. And due to someone else, like someone else said they might want this as their, like they want a book about this. So I think I'll add it to my Periscope guide. I'll do like a page of hacks and then you guys can check it out because I don't think, I think people forget that there's so many newbies and I don't want you guys to feel left out. But I have a little bit of time now. If you have questions about Periscope, I am happy to answer them for you. I want my Paia people to watch this. I want them to watch it too. Is it necessary to do a short scope to let people know that you are going to be on? Like a pre-scope, a pre-scope? Where do you get your guide? I will send you a link, Robin, about that. Laura, hi, welcome. Okay, so pre-scopes. I don't think it's necessary to do a pre-scope. I think if you're doing something really big, like really, really big, like I know people do underwater GoPro or like an event that you're going to do, then I would say yes, like maybe build some hype around it and let people know, <laughs> let people know that you're going to be live, then yes, I would. But if you're just going to do like a content scope, I don't know if it's necessary. If you have time, it's always good to let people know that you're gonna do something more content rich later. But I, I like announcing it on social media with like an image. So I like to create images that go along with the content I'm going to do. And then I usually announce it like on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. I don't use Instagram as much as others, but depending on what your home base is for social media, it's probably a good idea to mention it there that you're gonna be live on Periscope soon. So I think that that's better to do and easier to do probably than like a pre-scope, depending on what your style is or what's convenient for you. Um, any other Periscope questions? I, I like answering Periscope questions. Don't do this very often. <laughs> and we have some like really, really good Periscope people in the room with us. So if you guys have questions, now's the time to ask them. Um, I know one is already following you. Oh, good, good. No, I thank you. Yeah, that's fine. I love helping people understand the platform a little bit more. I know people are hopping onto Facebook Live. I think Facebook Live is gonna be awesome. I haven't used it yet. Any help for Android users? Um, what do you mean specifically? The hard earned cash name. Oh my gosh, yeah, I love that name too. That's all Danielle. That's all Danielle. She came up with that. I think I think she came up with that randomly when we were talking to our affiliates one day, but hard earned cash is the name of my Periscope course that Danielle and I created together. What is a good format? What is a good format for a scope? I don't know if I understand that question. What do you mean for a, like, what kind of, what do you mean by format? Let me know what you mean by that and then I will try to answer that question a bit better for you. Thank you for all the hearts. I am waiting to see what the format is. <laughs> oh my gosh, Danielle. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. It's fun to have ideas when you least expect them, but that's like intro, greeting, headline. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, for me, I usually like to do, I like to do tips. I think that tips, checklists, um, those types of things work really well as far as formats go. So like top five tips, 
top three tips, you know, th those types of things go really, really well. Then you can start off with like an intro. You always want to start off with an intro of who you are and what you do and what you scope about. Like you always want to say that right off the bat because that kind of pre-qualifies you for what you're about to chat about. So I, I always get confused when people come on as a relationship expert, but they never tell me like, are they a therapist? Are they, um, I mean, what, like, how are you qualified to talk about this stuff, right? So I always start every scope saying, hi, my name is Brandy. I'm a digital marketing and branding strategist. I've been on Periscope since June, and I love to share tips about the platform as well as advertising tips and helping entrepreneurs grow their business. Boom. Then I go right into like, today I'm going to show you X, Y, and Z. And then I just go, um, and I just go through all of my tips. And then you always have people coming in and out of the room that are going to interrupt you. So you want to kind of just get through your point and then read the question and then kind of store it in your brain and then get back to it later. Yeah. So the reason why I'm not using landscape is that I don't, I don't like it as much. Sometimes I do. So I have my backdrop over here and I'll sit over there and I'll do landscape, but I do like this version more. It feels more personal to me and I'll do landscape if I feel like I might want to throw it on YouTube. But even then I kind of like this format too for YouTube because then you can put um, call to action on the sides, you know, instead of having just the, the bars is that fabric I'm renting and I have white walls. Yeah, that's a tapestry and I got it from society6.com. So if you go to society6.com and then you go over to tapestries, then you can you can see there's so many, so many, and they're really nice. They're really nice. They're not too expensive and they come in different sizes. Yeah. Society6.com. Really cool. Lots of people take pictures in my scope. Have you mentioned how to? No, I haven't mentioned how to. So if you want to take a picture during a scope, you just take a screenshot. So if you're on an iPhone, you're going to hit the home button and the power button at the same time. And if you're on an Android, then you're just going to get the side of your hand like this and just swipe across the screen and that takes a screenshot. And then you'll see a camera float up the screen and it'll be the same color as your hearts. And that's gonna tell you that someone took a screenshot of you. And then when you take that screenshot, you can share that particular image out to Twitter. What's the best thing to use to hold your phone? Well, I am using a smaller, a smaller like phone tripod and I use, Archon mounts is what I'm using and I like totally not sponsored or partnered with them in any way. It's just when I was at Periscope Summit, this bad boy was like 10 bucks and it works really well. Um, let me take my camera out real quick and I'll show you it. So this is what I have. Yeah, I bought one off of Amazon and it was super janky I and mean, it like collapsed, but this is really sturdy and stable. So I like it and it completely like rotates all the way around. So I mean, I like it a lot, but I tried a couple different ones. I got this other one. This other one's really cool. It wraps around everything. It's Archon Mounts. He's on here a lot. You can go follow them, but yeah, it's an Archon Mount. Yeah, it's too flimsy. I don't like the flimsy ones. And then I just got this one, which is really cute just to kind of set my stuff on. So I like it. I like it to set this on, to set my mini on. So I just got this thing, which is cute. Yeah, and you can take a sticky off the bottom so it, it stays on here, but it's not a very good, it, ooh, it's not a very good angle, you know, to look at yourself. I wouldn't recommend it. But yeah, so that's what I have. I, and I think it's only $10. It might be a little bit more. Do you ever use a clip mic? Yeah, I have a clip mic on right now, right here. <laughs> I'm using the Movo. Does it sound okay? Do you guys hear a difference if I unplug Does it sound, is, is there a big difference? I don't think it's a huge difference, but I think it's just a little clearer. Movo, M-O-V-O. It sounds different. Yeah, so we can plug it back in. There, it's back in. Here we go. Is it a big difference? <laughs> yeah, I use Periscope every day. I'm on here once a day. Sounds clearer, okay. No, it doesn't use batteries. It just plugs right into the bottom of my iPhone. Movo, yeah, it's on Amazon. Um, what do you use scopes to promote? Podcasts, events, other? 
Hi Robin, yeah, no problem. I use Periscope to grow my personal brand. So that's what I use it for. I have worked in the ad agency business my entire life since the time that I graduated from college and I freelance and then I consulted, but now I'm building a personal brand and then I'm gonna launch some courses. I've co-created a course with Danielle Ford and then I also use it to build my list. Yeah, yes. So I build my list, I create freebies, and because I have an advertising background, I like to use Periscope as my own personal focus group. So I will ask my audience a lot of times what they want to hear, what they want to learn, what they like, what they don't like. You were at r and R? Hey, that used to be one of my clients. Yeah, I worked with r and I used to work for Centro. Have you heard of Centro? That was the company I worked for and r and was one of my clients. Cool, that's so funny, you've heard of them? Yeah, I worked at Central for a couple of years. So I was an account manager, then an account supervisor there. And then um, I moved on to consulting for boutique ad agencies. And then now I have been on Periscope since June. And you know, the cool thing about Periscope is that I have met people here who I feel like I'm actually friends with. I don't know how to explain it any better, but it's really, a, it's a real social media platform, okay? So it's not just about showing up. There's a real interaction that happens. So I went over to um, Periscope Summit in New York, and then I also went to Summit in San Francisco. And Danielle's a prime example. I always use her as an example because her and I met on Periscope, and then we were roommates in New York, and that was the first time we ever met in person. So, you know, it's, it's weird. Like, no other platform would I have done that. I would have never just, like, shared a room with a Twitter friend. That's weird but I felt like I knew her because I had watched so many of her broadcasts and she had watched mine. So I use it for collaboration a lot. Oh, good. Yeah, if you're not following me, I really would love for you to follow me. I do, I do tutorials most of the time. So I'll do tutorials here. I'll share my screen. Um, lately, I've been talking a lot about Facebook pixels and how to set up your Facebook campaign for success before you even launch. So just little tips here and there because I was a media buyer for lots and lots of years. I love, I love internet advertising. I know it's so dorky, but I love that and I love analytics and, and things like that. So that's what I scope about and I put it, I try to simplify it and put it in lay terms so people don't feel overwhelmed when they're learning from me, but that's what I do. We are twinsies. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I haven't, in, in the past, the jobs that I've had, I kind of looked down on social media. I was like, ugh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my time on social media when I can do a highly targeted ad campaign and not worry about it. But when it comes to building your brand, Periscope and live video, video in general is so much more productive than just posting a really good blog post. I mean, blogging is important and having good content is important, but when people can see you and hear you and feel like they're having a conversation and a real, a real live engagement with you, that's much more powerful than um, just reading your content and, and like, then, you know, they need to see you. I'm going to be releasing a product this summer. Where is the best place to learn how to market it? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you agree. Where is the best place to market it? I mean, it really depends on your market, um, like what you're marketing exactly and who your target audience is. You know, it's going to be a little different depending on who you're trying to hit. And that's the key thing that a lot of my clients, I think, miss. There's this misconception that you need to be everywhere always. And that's just, that's not true. That's not true, especially for an entrepreneur or a solopreneur who can't be everywhere. I feel bad that people think they need to be on every single social media platform and they need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on advertising. Really, you need to like get laser focused on who your ideal client is and, um, and then you need to get that person to convert for you, right? You just speak to them. So if you can get down to just like one person and have a, a conversation with that person, then you're gonna see more conversions. And you know, I have clients that work in fitness and I have motivational type clients. I have a restaurant client and I'm like, who, who's your target audience? And they're like, everyone. Well, of course, you're, you have a restaurant, so you're like, everyone eats, but that's not true. I don't think that, like, I don't, I don't think that that's true. You know, everyone, you have, you have an ideal person. Um, can you interview some on Skype and send it on Scope? What's your typical time investment on Periscope? Um, I try to broadcast at least once a day. And if I do, <laughs> if I do like a longer scope, like this is like a longer scope for me, 
then I may not scope tomorrow. You know, it really depends. It really depends on the follow-up and what kind of traction I get from it. And then I'll decide how much time I'm going to spend the next day. But that's why I love it so much is because even though I have a, I have a list of titles and topics that are just stored on my phone and, and everywhere else, I decide, like, do I feel like it today? Like, do I feel like scoping today? And if I don't feel like it, I just don't. And I'm not even at like a million hearts yet, but I recently hit 300 broadcasts and that's a lot for me. Like, that's a lot for me <laughs> to do that many broadcasts. But given how long I've been on the platform, I don't think it's that many. So on average, like once a day, if even. What's your best suggestion to gain new followers on Periscope? So my best suggestion for getting new followers is to interact. So it's not, it doesn't work well as a one-way engagement. For me, when I got the most followers, it was because I was broadcasting as well as engaging in the chat. So I don't just broadcast, but I also watch a lot of people and um, I don't, I don't just show up to their scopes, but like I try to give value in the discussion. You know, I try to help in the discussion. I try to help um, offer, like offer insight to things if they ask questions. Um, I try to recap, like give recaps for them if they're trying to get through content really quick and they can't recap it. I type in URLs and try to be helpful in the community and you're gonna, you're gonna get more followers that way. Um, sometimes just an FAQ at the end is helpful if comments are distracting. Exactly, exactly, yeah, typing the URL for them, like things they can't do while they're broadcasting, taking screenshots for them. A lot of times I'll take a screenshot and I'll share it out, you know, so that they have a good a good screenshot of their broadcast. Um, you know, just like help, like helpful things, helpful things in the chat. And then also you wanna participate in these communities. So there's communities within Periscope. So, you know, there's like tribes within within Periscope. And a lot of times they have Facebook groups. So I have a Facebook group. Danielle Ford and I manage a Facebook group called the Five Day Periscope Challenge. She created the Five Day Periscope Challenge. It grew so quickly that um, she asked me if I would help her manage the group. So I help her manage that Facebook group and then we watch each other's scopes and we support one another and help each other. Can you remind us of your intro? Um, well, the intro I think is really just a verbalized version of your bio. So I love talking about your bio, your Periscope bio and the format of that and how to make that really strong. And I think you should just recite that at the beginning of every scope, who you are, what you do, what you scope about and you know who you help. So it's, it's basically your elevator pitch within like the first couple minutes of your scope every time, every time. Yeah. So whatever's in your bio, your bio should, your bio should actually be the thing that people look at to decide whether or not to follow you, even when you're not live. So a good bio is another way you're going to get a ton of followers on Periscope. So if it's really, really strong, then even when you're not broadcasting, you're going to see your follower count go up. Um, you always want to ask for the share. You want to ask for the share because that's how you're going to expand your reach. It's a really organic platform. So if you don't ask people to share out, sometimes they won't even know to share the broadcast out, you know, so you need to always ask for it and yeah, and just interact on the platform and off the platform. You're, you're totally going to get more followers. Yeah, you're going to see growth. I mean, I get, I mean, it, it depends like how much I'm focusing, but on average, like a thousand new followers a month. And it's not just here, <laughs> like it's now leaked on to other platforms because everyone has their favorite platform. So people who follow me here have now started to follow me everywhere else as well. So speaking of that, this is also really helpful to do. This right here, I created this, this little thing. I think Twitter and Periscope go hand in hand and if you use the two platforms together that's how you're going to see the most growth so if you're like me and you have a very common last name um yeah pe I, that happens to me all the time that happens to me all the time so since my last name is Johnson that was taken on a lot of platforms so I wasn't able to use it everywhere so I'm mostly Brandy Marie J everywhere <laughs> I know. And then Snapchat, I have recently become very interested in, and I've started to use Anchor, but that's not here. 
Um, but Brandy Marie J is kind of my main one. I'm always on Twitter, always follow up with people on Twitter, and I would mention that. So if there's somewhere that you're very active, like Facebook or Instagram, whatever your home base is, I would let people know because they want to follow you and they want to interact after your scope is over. And that's been the most helpful for me. You will see when this is over, I'm going to follow up with all of you so you can kind of see how I follow up. And the follow ups is what you get people to keep coming back. Not sure how to use Twitter and Periscope together. Well, did you sign up with your Twitter account? So, you know, I signed up with my Twitter account and the way that that's helpful is when people want to talk to me, I opened up my direct messages and people always find me based off of that. Yeah, my Twitter following has grown so much from being on Periscope. Like, you know, I, without having to do so much. I find it so hard to view live scopes. Everyone is, is on a different time zone than me in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, it is hard. I'm in, I'm in California and everyone's in different different time zones, but it's okay. I mean, the replays are good for 24 hours, so you could always watch a replay. And um, I was off for three days, got almost no engagement. Does that happen on scopes? If you skip, you mean if you're not on Periscope for a couple of days, you get zero engagement? Hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like it doesn't matter as long as you have good content when you do show up. How do you get replayers to interact with you? Well, you always want to have a call to action. So that's the main way that I get replay viewers to engage is I'll say, hey, if you're watching the replay, you know, make sure you message me. You can message me on Twitter if you have any questions and I'll get direct messages later. Um, yeah, you really want to use the same username on both platforms because people totally interact that way. and. What's sad is that, you know, someone comes into your scope right now and um, they don't know that your Twitter username is different. They'll share your broadcast on Twitter and it'll tag that username that's on Periscope and it just kind of goes to nowhere, right? So it doesn't tag you. If that username is being used, it'll tag like a random person, but you want to have the same, you want to have the same username. And then when you use stuff like catch.me and, um, and full scope, when you click on those usernames in those platforms, it takes you to the Twitter page. So it's all linked through Twitter. Oh, okay. Well, if you go over, if you message Periscope directly, you can tell them that you want to have a Twitter account because Twitter owns Periscope. So you can, you can message them. Do you use hashtags? Yeah, I use hashtags. I love hashtags. I use them in my title. You never want to use too many hashtags though, like two to three. After that, it has a diminishing effect. Catch.me. Yes. Yeah. And if you want to go over to catch.me, you just go to catch.me and then you go front slash whatever the username is. Answers your questions. She answered my Maui scope review. He was so happy. Oh, good. Oh, Alan. Oh yeah. Alan's awesome. Yeah, if you go in and you do front slash Brandy Marie J, you can see every replay I've ever done. It's all on catch. Can you link existing Periscope account to an existing Twitter account if they're the same, if they match? Yeah, if they match, then, um, and you didn't link them originally, I'm not sure how that would even happen. But if you didn't link them originally, then just send a message to Periscope Help to customer support and they should be able to link it for you. And they even do like one change. I heard you get like one change where they'll change it so that they match. Yeah, if they match, they, sh they should automatically link, you know, the username and whatnot. So you just have to have, have the Twitter app installed. <laughs> How do we get more of you? <laughs> have the Twitter app installed on your phone and also have the Periscope app installed on your phone. And this is key too, because if you wanna to toggle between more than one account, because I access this account, I have a mommy blogger account, and then I have a show on Parachute TV. And the way I toggle between all the accounts is I log out of my Periscope account, then I go back into Twitter, and I log into the account I wanna access on Periscope, and then that's how I log in. Um, I missed that last question because I was talking too much. Periscope help takes forever and sends back canned responses. Yeah, they do send back canned responses. So you know what? A good way to get in touch with them is message them on Twitter. So go to their Periscope help account and then tag them on Twitter. They actually respond quicker there. More than one scope account? <laughs> yeah, I have three that I access. So I have this one and then my mommy one is um, Millennial Mamas. Your phone is hot. Yeah, it takes a lot of battery. About more than one account. Okay, good. 
Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, and if you plan to broadcast regularly because it's such a battery eater, you want to get, I'm going to show you my little, I'll show you this. You want to get this. This thing right here. You want to get this thing. Not this one particularly, but yeah, you want to get a battery. So this is my extra battery. And my battery pack so that when my phone runs out of battery, I literally just plug it into this thing and I get like four to six more hours of battery out of it. So I highly recommend if you're going to be like a legit scoper, get a mic, get a battery, get a stand, <laughs> and get all of that. Yeah, you need it for this. Your battery is going to die. It's just gonna, It's just going to die all the time. How many phone numbers do you have? Only one. I only use this one. And then I always shut down. I'm in airplane mode. Right now I'm in airplane mode, Wi-Fi only, do not disturb, so that calls don't come in and interrupt my scope. Because no one will call me the entire day, and the moment I go live, that's going to happen. How do you have three Perry accounts? What do you mean? You don't need, you don't need three different phones to have three accounts. That's what I was saying. You want to have Twitter accounts. So if you have, twi for every Twitter account, you can have a Periscope account. So Parachute TV, I use their Twitter account, and then I can log into my Parachute TV account. Then I have Millennial Mamas, which is my mommy blog. I have that Twitter account, and then I can toggle to that account, and then I can log into Periscope. So you, it's, it's just a drop down. Yeah, it's just a drop down option when you're in the mobile app. You switch to whatever Twitter account, then log in. Yeah. That's it. That actually should be a hack because I didn't know that. I didn't know that. If you sign with your phone number. Oh, yeah. Don't sign up with your phone number. Don't sign up with your phone number. You want to sign up with an email because if you sign up with your phone number, you don't have a matching username on Twitter. You want to have a matching username. Um, yeah, unless you don't want to have a matching username on Twitter, but I highly recommend it. I use Twitter as like my personal email system now, which is nice. I don't have to have everyone messaging me on my personal email. Okay, so I'm gonna end this. Thank you for, for coming on. Thank you for staying with me if you stayed the whole time. If you're not following me, please do. This is a mobile mic, M-O-V-O. -O. Um, do you think I should make another account for my business? I don't. I don't think you should make another account for your business. I think you should just have one account. It's hard to manage more than one account, so hard. So um, it's not highly recommended. I, I really wouldn't recommend it to anyone. It's too difficult. I only have it for two accounts because I'm crazy. I'm crazy. And that one has like 400 followers because it's too difficult for me to manage two. Uh, if you liked it, share. If you didn't like it, um, no, you liked it. Those were good hacks. Those were good hacks. I'll add it to my guide. I will tweet it out. Follow me on Twitter, okay? Because I tweet out really good stuff and I share everything there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Noi. Um, Brandy Marie J. And I will see you guys later. Please follow me. I want to see more of you. And if you're scoping, let me know what you scope about. And hopefully I can catch you live because I want to watch you live too. And I'm actually been, I'm really active on Snapchat. If you're on Snapchat, let's connect there. I've been snapping a lot more because it's easier than doing a whole broadcast. Okay. Bye guys. See you later.